Ik was nog ongeveer zo uh, om en bij, bij die dertig jaar nog wel op die water. En... Hier op Kassis bij je zaal niet aan de bedrijven nu. Dat is net voor van nu. Zo is het niet aan de uitkomst. Mijn pa was een verzorgman, ook een paar verzorgman, mijn oom is allemaal een verzorgman. Ja, die verzorgman was de anker van de gemeenschap geweest. Daar een jaar was het volop geweest. Want daar was het vol bij je schaar. Daar was het parasakkel bestaan. Aan die oostelijke richting gewerkt, uh, waar die de hoge reservaat is. Voor ze die toestemming gaat om haar te werken. En um, hulle na tijd toe te laten stoppen, zodat ons maag nog niet meer aan werk is. En dat is eigenlijk aan wat onze visies op eindelijk is. Dus al die onze vis van. En dat was gegeven, ons moet drie meter van die hoge water wegkaf. We moeten ons in die zee in gaan. En we moeten ons daar weg. Maar wat ga je daar van? Already by the late 1960s, uh, early 1970s, the, the rate at which fishermen were taking fish out of the sea exceeded their capacity to replace themselves. And it was necessary to do something. And right around the coastline now, we've got a number of these protected areas. In much the same way that we need protected areas on land, places like Kruger Park, Kalahadi, etc., we also need to protect parts of the sea for very much the same set of reasons. And the Whoop is one of the ones where we were able to show quite convincingly that the fish populations rebounded very strongly after fishing had been removed. The Hoop runs uh, between the mouth of the Breda River and Arniston. It's basically this area here from, from the point uh, three nautical miles out to over here somewhere. Kijk, ons, ons weer daar moeder is een vater is. Om in bron te beschermen tussen die klein vissies. Waar ons als vissermaan weet was, die klein vissies, waar ons neer hoe die. Ons moet het weer terugzetten. Yeah, outside of De Hoop, on both sides, east and western side, as I said, there's, there's quite a bit of fishing going on. And, and typically you'll find there's maybe only 10 or 20 percent of the abundance of fish there compared to what you would find inside a place like De Hoop. <laughs> 
They cause fish spawn every year of their life, and, and some of these fish might live to 20, 30 years. When you reduce their lifespan, it basically means they've got less opportunity to produce eggs. That, in turn, reduces the capacity of the fish stock to replace itself. You see that outside of the protected areas. There's just not enough big fish to produce eggs, and so you get a collapse of the fish stock. And the reason we have the protected areas is, of course, to maintain those old fish that, that they can spawn every year, and those eggs and, and fish larvae will actually drift outside of the protected area and replenish the areas outside. Of course, if you don't have that replenishment, and you insist on harvesting all around the coastline, well, then the fishing will collapse very, very soon. So I can bass, I buy up again the first one. And as old as can as I said, also the pans, which was the first one, and that was idle. All the yard was a means of first of them, but that Aris was what was the first favors from him, but that Oak for San Hobbit, that is a lot of tradition, the first favors, a lot of Siafal of a pack. So the Siafal was no limits of your first name. As a clean gives us a little more turns in the water, in the electricity, in the wheat, who was the first means of now with a whoop, Ali Brun, a dream. We know that when you fish a part of the ocean, what tends to happen is you remove the biggest fish and the high order predators first. They're the aggressive ones, they're the ones that get to your bait first. And in very much the same way as removing all the lions from Kruger Park, you know, you, you can expect a massive change in the ecosystem. What's happened at a place like De Hoop is that the natural balance has restored itself, in that those high order predators have returned and the ecosystem functions in a way that it used to 100, 200 years ago. This is the regering that went away. But he was here with us, people from Samana, and he didn't speak to us. He had zones for short to make. Ons mensen maken het een zekere lengte aan versvangen, zekere zone. Ons mensen was gewoond van aans en rein naar stil bij om te gaan versvangen. Die regering had het ook allemaal gezegd, die zone is een stoenie. Hij had het net toegemaakt. Ons mensen was bij boetes in een zekere area, zodat hij zijn vaat gaan versvangen. Wat moet hij zijn vaat te wassen? Hij was nog nooit hier in Kassies bij. Om voor ons persoonlijk zeer af te komen voor die broei van die vissen, die groetes van die vissen. Hulle doen hulle eerder maar. Is net een man van Kassies bij, wat bij de hoogreze vaart weer. Dat is eigenlijk een man wat, waar ik en jij wat, die werd oog drie daar onder die reze vaart. Dat is een man wat door ons daar ook ook kreeg. The handline fishery has got a greater capacity to target species relative to, say, trawl, which is quite a broad spectrum method. So you'll tend to get overall more species caught in a trawl than you would in a handline. The, the, the skipper on the handline boat is, is able to target specific species to a higher degree. Still, they will have quite a substantial impact on predominantly the reef-associated species. As a big boat with its fish net to come, and it comes in our waters, in, Neem die meeste van onze vissen weg. Van die weet dat het moet zijn groot trekker netten. Nou, hoe kan die gegeren denk, hij het die inpak op onze waters net. Het is een goed inpak. One species that is caught by both the lion fishermen and trawlers is of course uh, silver cob. It's a target of the lion fishery, whereas the trawl fishery does pick it up as bycatch. They're, they're also marketed, and although they don't target silver cob, so they can't really avoid it. But that's actually one of the few cases where there's overlap between these two fisheries. So it's done at now late. Als de aarde toekomt, zo kan je bij die vis bedrijven. Bij je van die toekomende, wat ons gerekend wordt, gaat vis om andere, die stijl niet meer belangen, zie je toch aan die. Zo weet je of 
na vijf jaar of na tien jaar of iets die zien nog zo'n voet gaan die. Once you allow fishermen in an area where there's a lot of fish, and I can tell you, it's just any kind of fishing, it doesn't matter what it is, if, if you're going to be catching large quantities of fish, for the provision of food, there's going to be an ecological impact. There's no getting away from it. It, it just takes on different forms with different fisheries. That, that is exactly one of the reasons why we have protected areas. We can't allow fishermen to fish everywhere in the ocean, it just won't work. We will we'll just destroy everything. So we've got to keep some areas protected. Look, I think commercial line fishing these days is really tough. Firstly, they're not catching nearly as much fish as they used to 50 or 60 years ago. There's just less fish available. Um, largely because of overexploitation, but perhaps other reasons as well. To make a go of line fishing these days, as with any business, to be profitable, you've got to pay attention to the revenue, which is the, the amount of money you're going to make out of your fish, um, and the costs as well. So, unfortunately, these days the price of fuel is really, really high. Um, much more so than in previous years, and the, the price of fish hasn't gone up to the same extent, which means that they really are struggling. I mean, oh, there's not one person who is fast and cool. Na imag we riskay ba sa wada iba la iba talo la susa i hombo full o malata batal. Tay meral man man do sa isla kyo kasi sa aksti. Ena di man tu al bili first duhan na iman will say no kasi sa aksti. Traditional handline fishermen, I believe, can persist. They have to take on board modern practices. They have to try to break into modern markets if they're going to get the price they need. The method itself, there's nothing wrong with the method of fishing. The knowledge that they have of where to catch fish, when to go, what kind of equipment to use, for example, that's going to help them in the future. But they need to bring on more expertise on how to market their fish better. Nee, Verzwaren is een geheel, ik heb dat er even. Ik laat even mijn zeel aan haar en voor zich geheel. Dat is nooit zo. Dat is geheel te verzwaren.